My Pixel 3a is fantastic. I purchased this phone a little while back, right when it came out. I traded in my Pixel 2 for this phone, and immediately I was so excited, so enamored with it that I wrote an entire review, filmed that review, and I was about to release it, and the iPhone 11 got announced. And I loved it. And every reviewer out there seemed to love it. MKBHD, who I love, was enamored with it. Everyone on YouTube seemed to be obsessed with the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro. So my cousin bought one and I got to play with it. And now more than ever, I am still super excited about the Pixel 3a. Let's talk about why. First off, let's talk about the camera. I've never been in love with the way that the iPhone processes their pictures. Apple does a fantastic job of making colors pop in a way that people just say, that looks cool. I like the way that my Pixel tends to cut edges, up the contrast, and give me just a little more edge, and in a lot of cases, much more detail. You can look in the way that they handle their portrait shots. That's one reason in particular, I just won't go with the iPhone right now. You can notice on this picture of my cousin who is the one that bought the iPhone. You lose almost all of the detail on the edges of the necklace on the back. His beard is a lot more muddied. He just doesn't look as clear in the iPhone picture, but it trends warm, which a lot of people do like. And from a distance without zooming in, there's not a whole lot of difference. But when I went over to the pixel photo, you can see a lot more clarity. You can see individual hairs in the beard. You can tell that the necklace is still there. While it does still lose a little bit of edge detection detail, it's a lot better off than it was in the iPhone. The same holds true with this picture that I took of a little carousel toy. You can look at the detail and the difference is staggering. While there's possibly a little more noise in the pixel photo, the photo itself just appears more realistic, more clear, more contrasty, you can just tell that there are more details there. The iPhone felt lacking again. The one area that I would say that the iPhone excels in is video. The stabilization is fantastic. The options for video are much greater. The Pixel 3a cannot do 4K60. The Pixel 3a is much more limited in terms of slow motion. If you're focused on shooting a lot of video, the iPhone's great, but the Pixel 3a is not a slouch. Let's talk a little bit about daily use of this device. Um, perhaps the biggest problem that I have with the Pixel 3a is performance. When you're talking about a device that costs me $150 after the trade-in, you can't really expect too much, but the lagging is noticeable in day-to-day -day use to the point that I would discourage power users from getting it. It's a device that begs to be used as utility and not for fun. And the reason I say that is when I hop into Instagram, it takes maybe a half second to a second longer. That doesn't seem noticeable, but if you're opening it throughout the entire day, that adds up. When I'm texting, there's lag enough that it messes up the autocorrect and it can mess up the way that the words show up. It'll hang too long on V when I'm typing, the space won't register, or the double tap space for a period won't register. It is frustrating, but not a deal breaker for me. It's definitely something that stands out, and it's definitely something that I try to tell everyone that's considering this phone you need to look at. Now, I will note, I have spoken to several other people who bought the Pixel 3a, and they have not reported the same types of issues that I'm seeing. So there is a complete possibility that mine is just a bum phone. I should also note, right now I have Instagram as the only social media app on my Pixel 3a. I am in the process of trying to clean up a few things and reduce my social media consumption in the interest of being a little healthier. That's part of the reason that my phone is getting incredible battery life still, um, but it should also perform a little better, I would think. None of that detracts from the fact that this is still, in 2019, a fantastic value phone with a best-in-class camera. The iPhone by contrast, as far as performance, is a beast. It works really, really well. 
consistently. The Face ID was fast. Every single time I watched Andrew unlock his phone, it was almost instantaneous. However, I'm one of those weird people that still is a fan of the fingerprint sensor. It's immediate, it is consistent, it is still secure, and it doesn't require me looking at my phone. I hope that under the glass fingerprint readers take off in a direction that allows for a mix of Face ID and the fingerprint reader. As the Pixel 4 just showed us, having one option is not always the best idea. It's less secure, and I don't like that we have to rely on one method. So, is this the year that you should buy an iPhone 11? Yeah, maybe. This is a great year for a great iPhone, but if you were one of those people that was entranced or brought in by the fact that they have a really cool new camera, I don't know that that's really reason enough to get there yet. Their algorithms, in my opinion, are not quite there. Their picture quality is just not quite there when you compare it to a device that is the budget option from Google. They're doing fantastic things with their software that makes up for the fact that they don't even have as good a hardware in their system as the iPhone does. Now, if you're someone that is whipping out your phone at a party and taking a picture and you just want it to look good, yeah, the iPhone will do that. But I also believe the Pixel 3a will do that in roughly the same manner. I don't think you're going to be disappointed with either one of these phones. And if you're looking to save a few hundred dollars, the Pixel 3a is a fantastic option. The biggest differentiator and a reason that might sway someone to the other side is video capability and the wide angle lens. And I will admit the wide angle lens on the iPhone is fantastic. It was fun to use. It looked cool. There were so many situations in which I just thought it was fun. It felt like a skateboarding video. It felt like getting a cinematic view of anywhere that you were at. It's a panorama without having to panorama and it was fun. I think it was a huge mistake that Google left it off of the Pixel 4 in favor of a telephoto, which on the iPhone 11 Pro that I was using to compare my Pixel 3a against, I very rarely found a cool use case for the telephoto lens. Is it neat? Yeah. I'm just not someone that zooms in on my phone very often. And if I'm taking a picture like that, I generally take it with the standard lens and I zoom in later and crop if I want to. Uh, the resolution on these is high enough that that's, eh, it's been okay. For me, when we're talking about the phone that you use in your pocket every single day, I need something that works, and I need something that gives me fantastic pictures. The Pixel 3a does everything that I need and more. In addition to handling multitasking in a way that is intuitive and fast for me, and switching between apps, having navigation buttons on the bottom of these big phones. I still, to this day, Apple, I don't understand why your design language has the back button in the upper left-hand corner. It is frustrating and no, swiping across the screen as a gesture does not work consistently enough across the apps the way the Android back button does. It's just, it was one of the most frustrating things of using the iPhone 11. And it's something that honestly will probably keep me away from the iPhone ecosystem for just a little bit longer. I say this as someone who just recently bought a MacBook Pro and I desperately wanted to jump into the iPhone ecosystem. This is a great entry point. The iPhone 11 is a fantastic device. iPhone 11 Pro is a great device. Between the two of them, yes, you should go with the 11. Everyone else is saying that. The Pro, the only advantage is that telephoto lens. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth the extra money. I think, I think my cousin made a mistake by buying the iPhone 11 Pro. The iPhone 11 is a fantastic device. If you're stuck on Apple, that's a great way to go. But in the interest of saving money, in the interest of having a better camera, and in the interest of having a device that is still a joy to use, the Pixel 3a competes well above its weight class. So why didn't I buy an iPhone 11 or an iPhone 11 Pro? My Pixel 3a is fantastic. It cost me $150 and it took photos consistently better to my eyes than the iPhone 11 was taking. So I'm going to be holding out for 2020. And hopefully Apple will come to the table with a slightly better algorithm, a little bit better edge detection on their portrait mode, and maybe some consistent navigation buttons at the bottom, please. While I'm asking for things from the iPhone, I want to be able to rearrange all of my apps. I want to be able to put apps wherever I want because having them on the lower row for a device that is huge is nice. I have big hands but I still don't want to stretch up to the upper left-hand corner for anything. 
My rant is over. Do I think that you should buy the iPhone 11? No, I don't. Do I think you should buy the iPhone 11 Pro? Hell no. The Pixel 3a is a fantastic device and I think most people would be best served by a Pixel 3a in today's world. If you are trapped in the Apple ecosystem or you're just in love or enamored with Apple, yes, the iPhone 11 is a fantastic device that you will be happy with. But the Pixel 3a is too. Thank you for watching. I'm going to link all of the full quality photos and everything below so that you can kind of take a better look for yourself as I know on video sometimes it's hard to tell. You can download all of those from our website, tndmtr.com. The name doesn't matter.com.